hey and welcome to another ICT2 video. Look, hands, 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 magic hands. We're going to be getting hands on today. I wanted to actually do a different kind of video and show you something that's kind of like a spin-off to Model Railways because Model Railways, well, it's such an incredible hobby because it encompasses so many different skills and so many sub-hobbies. You've got all the woodwork, you've got the metalwork, you've got soldering, electrics, electronics, you've got, um, you know, craft crafting and, you know, making mountains out of lumps of clay, filing down bits of polystyrene, and you've got the modelling and, and scattergrass and glue and painting and it's just huge. Well, up until um, recently, this... <laughs> This was my um, my crafting centre. This is my crafting HQ. You can see we've got um, a class 14 teddy there with a, a buffer missing, so it's in for repair. We've got tubes of poly cement. We've got screwdrivers. We've got a car carrier from the 1980s that I'm working on. There's even a damaged um, uh, signal box uh, there, which is having something glued back to it. We've got a tender drive locomotive that's waiting for, to have some work done. I think I can see a jet in there, an, an early jet, like a Gloucester Meteor or something. So, yeah, <laughs> it's not exactly me, is it? For somebody so um, organised and so OCD, this is not really, not really good enough. And then um, Hornby slash Hornbrill, Hornbrill slash Airfix, um, they came up with something to make life simpler. And here it is. <laughs> the Humbrel workstation. Um, as you can see, I don't know if it's quite in shot, it should be. I'm trying to crank my neck and have a look at the screen on the camcorder and I think you can just see it all okay. Um, but can I zoom out? No, I'm, I'm zoomed out as max as I can go. But yeah, this is it basically. It's by Hornby, as you can see just there. I mean, Hornby own Airfix and Hornbull now. It's all one conglomerate. But this is the Hornbull workstation, um, as you can see just there. Uh, I'm not going to bother reading it in other languages, but depending on whatever language you read, <laughs> please be my guest. So it's basically just an organizer. It's, just, it's basically just a desktop organizer. And some might say that it, it's not really worth the money because, you know, you can just get away with a sheet of newspaper, to be honest. <laughs> Most people have been building models with just a sheet of newspaper for decades and have never had a problem. But I suppose if you're going to be doing a lot of modelling or you take your modelling seriously, then this is something worth investing in. Or is it? I'm going to find out. Um, what, what we can see from the box is that you have got all these really nice photos of um, stuff being organised and tidied up and if you turn it around on the back, just look at that! I mean, I don't know, again, I don't, uh, I don't know how well you can see, but they've got tons of enamel paints and acrylic paints, thinners, poly cement, precision poly, all your brushes stacked up, your instructions slotted into the back, and there's even like an indent for an A4 sized craft mat so that you can, you know, cut things out of the sprues without damaging your actual proper desk or table or it's usually a coffee or dining table, isn't it, where you build models. Um, so, yeah, people that do weathering and like um, airbrushing, they, they have proper, you know, little paint, um, uh, what do you call it, like a, like a screen, like a, a little cove that they can get the painting done in without causing any mess. I guess if you're into your modelling, this is worth having a look at. Um, it was only £20, 19.99, so it's not too bad, really. That's quite affordable. Um, although it does look to be just a gigantic lump of plastic, doesn't it? So, hmm. Well, how about I open it up and see what's inside? Well, I'm not expecting there to be very much, actually. In fact, no, there's not. Oh, wow! Oh, okay, that's impressive. Um, <laughs> that's typical. You get a craft, you get um, a cutting mat, and I've gone and bought one especially. Oh, I don't know. But that's it. Nothing else in the box. So I think it is basically just your gigantic, you know, tray, your desktop organiser, and a cutting mat. That's really cool though. I did not know it. Did it say that it's come with it? Where does it say it's come with a cutting mat? Where does it say? Uh, looking all over the box. 
box contains you see now, now that that's really that's really odd look at this people box contains humble workstation only that's it it says it takes I mean even all this stuff over on the left uh, double depth sections for holding um, humble enamel or acrylic pots double depth water cup holders which allow the modeler to place humble 28 mil products such as matte satin and gloss coats um, mask all clear fix thinners and liquid poly designed to fit the humble A4 cutting mat within the working area not included not included two mixing areas either side of the cutting mat okay instruction sheet holder brush and tool holders easy to hold handles either side of the workstation and non-slip rubber feet included see that yeah it doesn't say that it comes with a cutting mat but it has. There's a cutting mat here. <laughs> um, in fact, I, I think it's just a really thick one, but it feels like there's two. No, I think I think it's just a really thick one, isn't it? Self-sealing A4 cutting mat. And I've gone and bought one as well. Ugh, look, I went and got one from the works for two ninety nine. Um, but there's a much much higher quality one um, already included. Ugh, I don't believe that. That's just typical, isn't it? Do you know, if I hadn't have bothered, there, there, just, there wouldn't have been one, would there? But, as it is, I've got two. Right, anyway, enough moaning about it. I've, it's just British of me, isn't it? I mean, it's a good thing, and there I am, moaning. So, let's open this, this bag up and see what's inside. <laughs> I think we can see what's inside. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's just get rid of the plastic. Oh, now that's, that's, that's actually quite nice. That's, that feels really solid, actually. It feels really good. Um, it's, I'm, lo I'm, looking for the, I'm looking for the feet. Yes, oh, there we go. Oh, it looks like one's missing, actually. Um, is that, that in the bag? Has it fallen off in the bag? There's like a little rubber um, stud that's missing. Uh, no, it's, it's definitely not in the bag. Um, okay, but there's a little rubber feet there, there's a little one there, and there's a, one there, but there's one missing here. Do you see that? Just down here in this corner? There's one missing, and um, I can't see where it is at all. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's, maybe that explains everything. Maybe that's why they put a mat in, you know. The, the guy or the woman at the factory was like, oh dear, um, there's a feet, there's a, a foot missing off this one. We'll chuck in a craft, um, a cutting mat, they'll, they'll be happy, it'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd rather have this though, to be honest. I can, I can easily just buy a little bit of rubber and put it onto the, onto the bottom, it's okay. Right, so how does it feel? Well, it feels really good actually, it feels really strong. It has got some, an, an indent at either end, so that you can grab it with your hands, they really are handle shaped. And it feels strong. You know, I'm not even going to try to bend it, but it doesn't feel like you could, even if you wanted to. So it does feel really quite strong, which is good because, you know, paints and thinners and stuff can weigh quite a bit. Um, I'm not too sure about these areas at the side. It's almost like it's trying to encourage you to use them to mix up paints and liquids in there. I don't really fancy doing that. Um, the areas for the paints at the back, they look quite nice. Um, let me just grab one. Okay, I'm back with a couple of paints from my old crafting um, HQ, and I must admit, that's pretty good. That does feel quite nice. And what I like is that they've even got the, um, the tiny indentations, excuse me, they've even got the really small indentations at the bottom, just like it says, double depth. So you can put in the free paints, well not the free paints, but the little tiny humble paints that come with the Airfix starter kits and stuff. Yeah, just like this. There's one. This is a really old one. I've written green on it for some reason. Um, but yeah, look at that. It just fits in perfectly. So it doesn't matter what size paint you're going to use, they fit. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say it holds them really steady, but I suppose you're not you're not gonna exactly going to lift it up and shake it like mad. But mild shaking, and it's okay really. It's not going to fly all over the place. So that's really good. Um, I'll just take those away again. Let's just open the um, crafting mat. The, I keep calling it a crafting mat, but they call it a cutting mat. 
I suppose it doesn't really make any difference. Um, oh, this is quite hard to open. I need some scissors. Right, yeah, there we go. So as I say, I can't guarantee if you're going to get one of these as well. It's very, very cool if you do, and if you do, please let me know. Um, it'll make me feel less special, but <laughs> I can take it. So there we go. Ah, oh, now that's nice. That fits perfectly, actually. That is absolutely beautiful. So, oh wow, this, oh, I didn't even know it had a smell. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, that's <laughs> it smells nicer than it looks and feels. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. How about the third party one though? Because um, having a third party one, being able to take a third party one is also just as important. You might not want to keep buying the official one all the time. You might not have the money or you might not have a shop nearby. That fits too. It's not as flush. It's not quite as nice, but then it is half the price, and um, it's a little bit of a cheaper build. But it does fit. It does fit, and at two ninety nine, you can afford to mess this up as much as you want, and not worry about it. So that's that's really good. That's really good. So if we put the official one back in again, which is lighter and bendier, yeah, that fits perfectly. This is really really good. Actually, I'm really impressed. I was worried that it would be just a total waste of money, but I think it's going to help me um, do my building. I do have some brushes as well, hang on. Okay, I'm back. And look, see, I've got some um, some thinner here, some humble enamel thinners, a little bottle. And it does sit there perfectly. Absolutely fantastic. And then we've got some brushes here as well. So I'll just whip these out. Oops. There we go, one of them's ah, rolling everywhere. One of them's lost its lid. Well, you know, it's protector thing. Um, let's just stick those in. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, that's really quite good actually. Um, I even have a little model somewhere, um, a little kit to build. Uh, but hang on, I'll just go get it. Okay, I'm back, and I'm with my kit. This is actually for a future um, IC82 project. Whoa, spoilers. Um, I'm gonna show you how to put together a tank and then put it onto a low loader for um, like a, a particular military type freight train. And so if I just, if I just whip this open um, so we can get access to the instructions and everything. So if you can, if you can imagine that you're, you're sat down and you're doing this properly and stuff. Um, Let's just get the instructions here. This is a Churchill Mark 7 tank. And let's pretend that I am on stage 11, where it looks like you put the turret onto the top of the chassis. And let's just stick that in the back, is that right? <laughs> okay, well I guess you might have to do some clever folding to stop it from flopping all over the place. But it does hold it. It genuinely does hold it. It's the perfect, um, the, yeah, look at that. That's really good. Join the Airfix Club. Okay, uh, some stickers, well, transfers, and there's the actual tank. So, yeah, that's really nice. I'm seriously impressed, people. Um, I thought it would be a waste of money. But I think it depends. It depends how into the hub you are. It depends how serious you are about building kits. If you're quite seriously into it, and you take the time and the effort to get them painted accurately and built as well as possible, then this is definitely worth investing in, because it's just going to make doing the job so much more, well, enjoyable, um, so much more fun and so much easier as well. It, it's nice to have everything close to hand, to not have to be rooting around for it, and it's nice to nice to have everything tidy and organised, and it does feel like such a good you know, such a good unit. So, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm glad I got it. I think it's really going to help with the layout. It's really going to help me to put lots of kits together. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are. If I just take, um, if I just, well, if I just put the tank stuff to one side, because I'm technically not doing that right now. Look, we've got another kit here, uh, the Dapple 
uh, model railway series. This is a 00 scale slash HO scale Stevenson's rocket. Look at that. I mean, DAP will do loads of these. And it's not just trains, they do wagons, they do um, accessories, they do little coal sheds, everything. Um, so do the Wills kits. You know, not every, not every piece of scenery for your layout has to be resin cast or built, built out of card. Which again, this would be useful for. You could use this to help you build the card ones. Um, a lot of stuff is plastic. A lot of stuff is plastic kits like this. And this is just perfect for this kind of thing. It's Dapol, it's not Humbrol, but it doesn't matter. It's probably going to be painted up in Humbrol paints or Tamiya. Tamiya are really good. I really recommend Tamiya stuff. That's very, very high quality. So that's one to build. And then look, do you remember this? If you're a regular watcher of the series, you should do. This is the Model Railway Village Part 1. The, um, I think it's the Station House. Is it the Station House? But, I mean, that plastic's just... Well, it's a bit messy, isn't it? It's rubbish. And it's going to have to be painted and put together and then weathered and made to look really realistic. So there's just loads and loads of uses that I can see this being used for. And that's really, really good. It certainly makes the 20 quid it costs worthwhile. Um, I guess the real proof is in the pudding to actually use it and build kits with it which is what I'll be doing next. So, <laughs> that's when I shall have my real verdict on it. But, from what I can tell, it looks fantastic. It really does. I recommend it. It's well built, it feels nice, it doesn't move around, it's really strong, holds all your stuff, and you might even get a free cutting mat. <laughs>